So when you talk about training load, training load basically means how much have you trained for the week. Okay? I am going to give you a simple equation to calculate your training load for yourself and I want you guys to do it today. How many of you know of this scale, rate of perceived exertion scale? Come on, put your hands up, less than 10 percent. Okay. So, rate of perceived exertion basically um, the original scale was a 6 to 20 scale developed by a psychologist called Borg and hence it is called the Borg scale of perceived exertion. Um, basically he wanted to quantify effort. Say for example, I make someone stand here and I give a 2 kg dumbbell in one hand and a 3 kg dumbbell in the other hand and I ask him to close the eyes and I tell him can you quantify how much is the weight difference. I doubt the answer I will get is 1.5 times because we do not perceive effort in terms of numbers. We do not perceive efforts that 3 kg is, is 1.5 times of 2 kgs. That does not happen. right? We base our perception of effort on our feelings. So how do you quantify feeling? And this was the question that Mr. Bog was faced with. He wanted to come up with a scale where if he asks someone how do you feel and they say okay I am feeling a little tired, he wanted to assign a number to that feeling of little tired or someone says nah this is too easy, he wanted to come up with a number for the feeling of too easy and therefore he came up with the 6 to 20 bog scale and in the 6 to 20 bog scale the numbers actually double. So if you say something is fairly light it would be 8. If you say what is the double of fairly light, somewhat hard, right? that would be 16. But then using the 6 to 20 scale was not very, uh, very it, it, it has its own problems when you try to use it in, in numerical terms when you are doing statistics and that is why it was modified to this 1 to 10 scale. And if you can see on the screen, every single number has a activity level assigned to it. And the way you use this scale is say today you go out for a 5k run. When you come back you have to ask yourself how hard was it? I do not want numbers, I want the feeling. <coughs> how hard was it? And say you say that was comfortable, that was fairly easy. Now if you say comfortable and fairly easy, what number would you assign to it? Come on guys, around 2 to 3, correct? Is that fine? Say it has been a very hot and humid day and you have done the same distance in the same time and you ask yourself how hard was it? And this time the answer is, nah it felt a little hard. Today was a bit hard for me. What number would you assign to it? Close to 6, right? So this is how you assign the numbers. You do not assign it based on you know on a, on a 1 to 10 scale how do you feel. You ask yourself how you feel and then you assign the number to it. That is one of the biggest issues that I have found with people using the RPE scale. They ask you know name a number between 1 and 10. It is not about the number, it is about the feeling and once you know the feeling you can assign a number to it. This is what we call the sessional RPE, which means the training session time into intensity. In the first instance, you did it 30 minutes into 3. In the second instance, you did it 30 minutes into 6. Clear? Everyone is clear? Now we are going to see how we use that to calculate our weekly and monthly workloads. Okay. Now say you have trained in a similar fashion for one week. Okay? So you did 90 units today, 90 units tomorrow, 90 units the day after and you had 5 such sessions in the week. You just tally it up total and that is your total workload for the week. Does that make sense? So today you went for a run 5 k's 30 minutes, uh, you felt it fairly easy, you ended up with 90 units. Tomorrow you went for a cycle ride, you did 40 kilometers in, in 1 hour 10 minutes and you felt very comfortable. So that is 70 minutes into whatever number you assign. 
the third day you go for a swim for about 50 minutes and you felt fairly comfortable so that becomes your 50 minutes into whatever number you assign you calculate it up for the week and that becomes your acute workload or workload acute workload is sum of load across a seven day period that is you know if you have gone for a training session five days a week you just calculate for each of those five weeks add it up and that becomes your acute workload okay so let's say in week one you did a thousand units in week two you did a thousand units in week three you did a thousand units in week four you did a thousand units right so your average for four weeks becomes a thousand units and that's your chronic workload the ratio of the work you did in one week to the work you have done in the last four weeks becomes your acute to chronic workload ratio can you actually use this in your training so say you are four weeks from a race okay and you need to reach 2000 units of training at the race today you are at a thousand can you go to 1300 next week and 1600 the week after that and finally 2000 after that can you well let's find out the sweet spot where if you increase the training by 10 percent your chances of injuries go down if you increase the training load by less than 10 percent your chances of injuries go up and if you increase your training load by more than 10 percent again your chances of injuries go up so the golden uh, number is around 10 percent so if you have done five sessions of training this week and your total training load is a thousand units you should be aiming for 1100 units next week simple right so the main point of confusion i face when i talk about acute and chronic workload ratios is people ask me matlab aaj main kitna karu that's the usual problem people love to have definite numbers whereas this is about how much can you